Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video and we're here to talk about the old firm <sighs> again already. 12 days after discussing it the last time, which is actually 47 days after discussing it the previous time. Before that, we are here once again to talk about an old firm, meaning we are never beaten that we play each other 40 times a season allegations from English football fans. However, a line needs to be drawn in the sand. Yes, it's old firm week. Once again, yes, it's the biggest and best derby in world football, but it's a very, very unique old firm week. Ladies and gentlemen, as it's the first time since the 2002 season that Rangers and Celtic have met in the Scottish Cup final. But I addressing the obvious right away, it's not going to be a traditional preview. So if you're clicking on today's video, I think you're going to hear the exact same stuff broken down for both sides. I'm going to try and mix up to keep the content as fresh as possible. Because again, we've discussed this fixture, we've discussed this game 12 days ago, or by the time this is posted, it will be 13 days ago, and we've done it twice in the last 47 days. So we're going to try and keep it as fresh as possible. Just talking about the actual game itself, the fixture, the occasion, the cup final, and several key talking points points which is the difference in my opinion in Celtic and Rangers. But before we go ahead and try and sink our teeth into that fixed stake, ladies and gentlemen, I want to pull it back and I want to talk about something we alluded to right at the start of today's video, that Scottish Cup final, because I feel myself this entire week being pulled in and pulled in and sitting reminiscing. Not only is it a game that you've heard me mention several times over the years on this channel, but if I ever run into you guys in the real world, if you want to call it, and one of the questions I get asked is, how do you make money for YouTube? But also, um, what is your favourite game or your favourite childhood memory, you've heard me talk about the 2002 Scottish Cup final several times in that aspect and maybe it just hits because of the age I was and the nostalgia factor but that's the game that's in my memory because there is so many that comes up, you know what I mean, the, the game versus Dunfermline, Arteta scoring the last minute penalty, the pandemonium and that's burnt in to the national but there's just something special, that added ingredient in the Scottish Cup final 2002 that lives rent free in my head, it was probably the fact that my dad was swinging me by my heels air like this and this and this and the, the celebrations and the fact that two of my favourite all-time Rangers players, Peter Livingkrantz, who I still to this day, no matter where I stay, ladies and gentlemen, where I've moved in the world, has brought his signed VHS tape. Now, a VHS is a videotape ladies and gentlemen, to the younger audience. You actually put it in, you had to hit rewind. Anyway, it was wild time, ladies and gentlemen, right? But I've still got to that to this day. That's how much I rated that lad day and the other goal scorer on that day was the captain himself, Mr. Barry Ferguson. And I'll be honest, what I would give to have that man leading us out. Nomura. But believe it or not, it's not just the nostalgia factor that feels myself drawn back to that game and looking in to that game or even just myself trying to protect myself mentally from the absolute shite bag bottlers we've got in the squad these days by thinking of guys that really played for this badge. It's not just that, I'm constantly drawn back because there is some crazy similarities to where we are now to where we were, believe it or not, back in the 2002 season as both sides went ahead and met. And if you give me the next couple of minutes, you'll hear those crazy similarities because in that game leading in to that Scottish Cup final, Celtic had just won the league looking to make it a dirty double by winning the last domestic trophy Avail available. Sorry, whilst Rangers had won the League Cup, lost the league to Celtic and then went into the last game of the season looking to make it a dirty double for them in that aspect. So right there, it's absolutely perfect, it's absolutely balanced, but believe it or not, there's another layer on the similarity, ladies and gentlemen, because in that 2002 season, Rangers had sacked their manager early, a new manager had came in by the name a Big Egg, but the new manager had came in, won the League Cup, unfortunately lost the league to Celtic and then had his eyes lit up looking to make his first six months at this football club a memorable one by winning a dirty double. Do you see what I'm saying? There is crazy similarities and I'm looking you directly right in the eyes right now and say I'd give anything for history to repeat itself. Now, of course, none of this actually has any real relevance to the game. It's not going to impact the game, or will it now? Of course it won't, will it? I don't know. Who knows? You just never know these days, but all joking and all that aside, I just want you to break up some of the negativity and the doom and gloom that match is seeing out there by just bringing you something I found very interesting when you look at what it was then to where it is now, how much we think back 
how much we're here and just show you where the team actually is and again just break up the negativity and the toxicity that's around the actual place but getting to the actual proper discussion points let's have a wee look at this Celtic squad before we go ahead and talk about Rangers then shall we and it's, there's no much to really add regarding Celtic that I can get again say 13 days after as it has been 13 days since they went ahead and beat us at Parkhead which effectively wrapped up the league title and then a couple days later they'd done their job as a professionals by officially wrapping up yet another league title or league title sorry that they wobbled it they looked nervy it looked like it was gone wrong they started to lose a couple key players they handed the momentum over to rangers they gave the opportunity to rangers and then the rangers players rc's collapse when it started to get real and the celtic squad steadied the ship got players back from injuries and went ahead and won the league title and now they find themselves going into a scottish cup final clear favorites for the game i think that's quite obvious to say and as crap as it is to say out loud they clearly are deserving of being the favorites tag because we haven't beat them for over two years we've barely turned up in all these games we look scared of them every single first half we ever play now i think if you actually look at the games again the majority of them are one goal separations and everything like that but again winners find ways to win and losers find ways to lose and for the last two years for the last 12 old firms especially this season this Rangers squad has found a way to lose and find another hard luck story well Celtic are just more professional in the fact that they turn up roll the sleeves and by hook or by crook win these games never something that I want to be sitting here and saying but there's no point in pandering and pretending we're no ladies and gentlemen that's the facts that's the actual truth they've got a team that is built on winning they've got that winning mentality they've got that winning appetite there's a lot of talk about we're hungry for this we're hungry for that well there's only one team actually eating and satisfying that hunger and it's the Celtic squad and we loosely mentioned injuries in terms of Celtic as well and we're obviously going to talk about that later on with regarding Rangers but even in that it's that is a massive difference between the two sides. I mean, several of their players had potential season-ending injuries, but they managed to fight back. There's an appetite to get on the actual part, play every game, and change the momentum of their season. Both Callum McGregor and Maeda both had potential season-ending injuries. Both battled their way back in, played minutes here, 5, 10, substitute, substitute, built themselves up, and then steadied the ship and helped their team, team win. Whilst we've got boys that's missing for months and months and months and months now I'm not sitting here and saying one team's hiding I'm not saying your Rangers players are pretending they're hurt I'm just saying the entire structure of the clubs are completely different Celtic players relish getting on their park and winning things we've just got players floating about no day in anything and it's absolutely incredible how different their medical department is and how clear their medical department is of ours just look at the treatments how did they get McGregor back like we've got boys missing it's 50-50 two and a half months later there, they're still no back, it's absolutely embarrassing, it's something needs to be rooted and changed directly in the summer, it needs to be something that's identified and figured out what is going on, whether it is buying crook players or not, what a lot of people say in the comment section, well there is something wrong right there and it needs to be all cleared out because Celtic have had injuries, I mean Carter Vickers has recurring injuries all the time but their medical department gets him on the game it gets them on the part for the big games. If Carter Vickers was a Rangers player given his injury history, we wouldn't have seen Carter Vickers, and that might be sounding a bit daft, but look at all the players we just didn't see anymore. Again and again and again, it's constant, it's consistent, it's where we are as a club, and it's one of the main reasons I think when the tough gets going, Celtic get better and we get weaker, because look at us going into this game, ladies and gentlemen. What, we got 11 first team injuries? 11? first team players who injured and genuinely you can make an argument that 70 or 80 percent of those 11 would be starting this game tomorrow if they were fit it's just embarrassing how long can we keep saying oh it's unlucky it's unlucky it's no unlucky if it happens season upon season upon season I'm sick of it. But to finish up the Celtic side of today's video and give us a natural branch in to the actual Rangers side, you're looking at another significant factor in this game of football for both sides, both histories of the club, both foundations of each club, is the fact that if Celtic win tomorrow, they'd have won the exact same amount of trophies as us in terms of major trophies. That's what's at stake right there for the Celtic players. That's what's dangled in on them. They've been chasing for so damn long, now it's right there in front of them and they'll come out firing looking looking to grab that bit of history but I'm looking at it for a Rangers fan perspective that's who I'm actually looking at this game and I want to ask you who's watching today's video right now do you think that's even going to matter to some of the boys that's in 
our locker room and our dressing room. Do you think that's going to motivate them? Do you think they care about the history of this football club that's been there for all these years and it's been poured in and the blood, sweat and tears that people's went ahead of them or before them? I should say, do you think that matters to them? Because genuinely, I'm looking in your eyes when I say this, I'm not sure. And that's very difficult for me to admit because you all know I'm one of the most annoyingly positive people in, in this actual space, especially when it comes to Rangers because I've not just turned up when we won 55 now. I've been here through it all, ladies and gentlemen, right? It's been really, really tough. Look at the greys that's on the Nasher. And you will see that in terms of Ellen Road where I'm allowed to post that video against the English YouTubers, you know what I mean? There's a lot of greys that's been departed and handed to me for this Rangers side, so it really hurts me that I need to sit and admit before a major cup final with what's at stake and the history of that that could be tied up on. I don't care if these players even care. Truly, I just didn't because how many lifeless performances do we need to watch before we get that message? I'm watching them over two years without laying a hand on Celtic. Again, the hard luck stories all were down to 10 men or it was only a goal. This team used to be about winning things. It wasn't making excuses up and being accepted being failures. No, it used to matter to win things, ladies and gentlemen. That was the standard, but the standard is slipping away that, oh, it's unlucky, we were close. It was only one goal in it. Actually means something. To me, at Disney, and I wish people would tell the Yins in the dressing room. Now, the argument could be made that they really do care and it does mean to anything, but they're just no good enough, which could be it, but as equally as frustratingly as you get me, because us is in terms of a club pay more wages than Celtic, so what are we paying for if we're getting nothing? At the end, of it, again, there is so many layers of this football club that is absolutely fry for the medical department, to the scouting, to the training, to the set pieces, to the product that's on the park, it's just not been good enough for a while and that's why we see our tremendous lead in terms of trophies, I know obviously what we went through in the journey back, we had the day certainly played its part on it, but that we kind of keep using that excuse, we pay mere wages now in the top league and we're getting nothing back because we keep buying crap, the recruitment is crap and we keep missing players for month after month, we're not identifying bringing in talent in Scottish football, we're keeping our nose up here and being excited about this guy and this guy and this guy, ignoring bagsmen and clinical people in this league that could make difference because we want guys with fancy names for elsewhere, it's, it's all just daft ladies and gentlemen, and it really brings me a frustration when I start to think about this club and the depths of this club and what's needed for this club to get back to the standard that it previously set. And aye, that's how I feel going into this game. I hope these players actually turn up and give everything. But given what I've seen in the 3-3 the draw at Ibrox, the way they started that game and then gone to Parkhead in the last two years and how winless we've been over the last two years, it doesn't give us a lot in terms of what we've got right now. Still like the manager, but he really needs to start picking a starting 11 that doesn't handcuff us in the first half because he's been losing every old firm he plays 2-0 at half time. I can't handle that anymore. I really like the manager, but he's got to get it right this time. Now, I know his hands are tied in terms of what he can actually pr probably put on the part because there is so many injuries actually out there, but there's obvious ones today and it's going to be interesting to see how it lines up because to me, I feel like he's got everything wrong so far in terms of his starting 11. He's had to rip up every game plan by either halftime or 50 minutes in the biggest moments. It's time now for everybody to get on the same hymn sheet and start singing, ladies and gentlemen, because there is so much more at stake than just a Scottish Cup gone tomorrow. And can we actually... Sure, we may fight for it. But of course, as we have alluded to several times throughout today's video, the injuries are a major part, and I'm honestly sick to death if you keep mentioning to you, but I've got to because it's Rangers Football Club and injuries go like this. It's no Rangers and winning anymore, it's Rangers and injuries, Rangers and hard luck stories. That's what we put on the product, that's what we continue to pay, that's what we continue to recruit, and that's what we're here to talk about again. And a must win game in football yet again. We are heavily hamstrung what we've got to put on the park as there's over 10 injuries to first team players now we've heard there's a lot of people pushing and everything like that and they want to get out there and they're, they're chewing at the bit to get, get there and that's what I like to hear because back in the 2002 cup final ladies and gentlemen Ronald De Boer started that game with a broken toe a broken toe can you imagine that these days you know what I mean if there was a guy with a broken toe do you think he'd be gone out there no 
And then Hinksy, and that probably underlines the mentality of football players these days to what they were even just 20 odd years ago. It is drastically actual changing, but aye, we are sort of void of certain players like Balogun. Balogun could potentially be back, sorry, but I mean, John Suter is definitely out tomorrow. Rid Van Yilmaz apparently was crying in the manager's office just two days ago, two days before a cup final, saying that he feels something and he doesn't feel 100% right. And that's where we're going. And that's why I talked about in the who stays, who goes very why we need to get rid of the likes of Red Van Yelmaz. Good player on his day, but is he just standing out to us because he's better than Barisic? He can't he play consistent games. He constantly misses the biggest games. It's another annoying frustration and it's another indication of we have five, six, seven, eight players in our team that when they play, they make us better. Absolutely, but they play 25 games a season, if that, in a 60-game season. And that's when the issues, and that's where the hard luck, and we have to constantly buy more players to potentially cover for them because they're injury-prone, and then, and then, and then that's why you've got a bloated, messy a squad like we've currently got right now. And, aye, it's real frustration, and I can feel it, I can see it, I've read your comments, I understand we've lived it together, how high this season looked before the familiar feelings came all crashing down. But again... As much as there is so much negativity out there, and I've probably um, added to that in this video, if, I can, if I'm honest, because I feel it. I just have to tell you the truth, the mess we are in the club, but it's still a game of football at the end of the day. It's still 11 versus 11, no matter what anybody says on social media. And if you win your individual battle, you give yourself a chance. And for me, you just win the middle. Of the park. That's where the, the, the foundations need to be. That's where Clement needs to focus on. It's not here, there, or everywhere. Win the middle of the park, you win old firms. Like I said in the last video, defence wins titles, but midfields win old firms. And for me, you need to solidify that. And again, I'm once again asking for Dujon Sterling to be dropped in the middle of the park. No, right, no here, no there. Middle of the park to win us the actual game. And I'm saying that despite the fact that if Red Van Zoot, Barisic will need to play, or Fraser will need to play. I get it all, what everyone's saying, but the middle of the park is vital for me, and I just want to see us put the guys that's got a wee bit of buzz actually in there. And Obviously, the biggest talking point is going to be John Lundstrom, and everyone knows where I stand regarding who stays or who goes. I still see him being a Rangers player next year. I think that's what's going to happen, and I think he will be starting tomorrow, and that's going to be a massive call, massive call on Phil Clement, because if he starts him, and if it all goes wrong again, like it usually does for Lunny in these cup, um, in these games versus Celtic, there will be real questions asked to Phil Clement, but again, you didn't get to that level in management if you've not got something about him, and if he believes in Lundstrom, you've just got to give him the, the benefit of the doubt in terms of the game and hope it turns out, but again, for me, you need to put balls in there. Sterling needs to be a part of whatever midfield three you want today. If it's Sterling, if it's Sterling Raskin or Diamandi, if it's Sterling Lundstrom and Diamandi, whatever you do in there, there needs to be legs. And that's all I'm going to say regarding the actual game itself. What about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below. I know everyone's negative. I know one's, everyone's ripped off the game. But it can still be won if the players actually believe it and it's gonna be a 50 50 crowd the first one in a while in terms of the old firms especially in a final it should be an electrifying atmosphere it should be a perfect advert for scottish football we just need the players to pull up the socks and go ahead and do the job i'd love to see what your opinions are what you would do with the middle of the park what would you do with a left back spot if red van's great and no want to play in a cup final let me know down there in the comment section below and as always i'm gonna predict going to penalties that's right i've never done it before but I think it's going to be a draw going into penalty kicks and then it might finish me and it might kill me off. You might never see me again. <laughs> That's it. I've been CJ Romani too. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.